Before I start, I want to say that I did not learn any coding or computer work in college. In fact, when I went to college, we had to type our term papers on an electric typewriter. That's how old I am. I learned all my coding by watching videos, googling, and especially doing coding experiments. That's what we will be doing in this video and throughout this course. In the scripts file, notice this array. To make it clearer, for now I'm going to empty this array and then console.log the variable colors. In the dev tools, first I'm going to change the theme to the light theme. So here in the settings, I'll select light. Okay, so in the console, we see we have an array zero with a length of zero. So I'm going to add a couple, I'm going to add one number, just a number one. It doesn't matter what number. Now it's a length of one. But you see the zero, the zero is the index. Or in other words, the position within the array. So the one is at the zero index. But if we put another one in there, now we see a length of two, zero, one, one, one. So the first one is at a position of zero or an index of zero. The second one is at an index of one. That's what's meant by zero index. It starts counting from zero. So if we console.log colors.length, we should get the length of the array. And we do, which is two. Okay, so I'm going to replace these numbers with strings. These are going to be hexadecimal numbers with the pound sign. Okay, so if I console.log in brackets, I'm just going to type the number zero, which is the index zero. So let's see what we get. And we get the hexadecimal number at the zero index, or the first one. You do one, you should get the second one, right? Again, that's because rays are zero index. So now let's talk about modular division. Let's say 5 divided by 2 with the percent sign is modular division. So we know that 5 divided by 2 is 2 with a remainder of 1. We get the answer 1. Okay. So now modular division is usually used within conditional statements. So if I say 5 percent sign 2, 5 mod 2, if that does equal 1, then I'm going to console.log true. But if it doesn't, then I'll console.log false. But we know it is true, so we should get true. So let's take a look. And sure enough, we get true. Okay, but if I change this to zero, which we know it is not, then I should get false. Okay, so this conditional logic, we're going to apply this in the next couple of videos. We're going to create the color picker. For right now, I want to talk a little bit about the for loops. Let's just review those really quick. So we have this array. It has three items in it, right? So let's say four, and inside parentheses, let's say I equals zero to i is less than the length of the array which is colors dot length and then i plus plus and they need to be separated by semicolons and i need the zero there okay so let's go over this each one of these elements in the array represent i so this one is zero this one was one and this one is two but we need to make sure that i is less than 3 because the length of this array is 3. So we're going to do this once, twice, and three times. But what we are going to do goes in the curly braces. So inside the curly braces, let's console.log a string. 
Let's just say, well, hello world. Okay, let's go look in the expect element and in the console we have hello world three times. So it's wherever, whatever goes in the curly braces is what we're going to do this many times according to these conditions. In the next video, we're going to see a real world application of this when we make the color picker table. It will be interesting, so I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.